Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Sadelpa hopes to gain more followers. Fiji First seeks for potential candidates and calls made to regulate cyberspace. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Sagar. The People's Democratic Party that contested in the 2014 general election is no more. This comes after current party leader Linda Tomboya confirmed that she will resign from PDP to contest the 2018 general election under the Sodelpa banner. Aksita Thale with more details. The MOU means that PDP will contest the next election as Sodelpa candidates. Leading the charge, Linda Tambuya says they're working with Sodalpa as they have agreed to take on their four key policies. Uh, firstly, the $4 minimum wage. Uh, secondly, the uh, removal of the short-term contracts for civil servants back to tenured contracts. Thirdly, the uh, return of collective bargaining rights as guaranteed under the 2013 Constitution. And fourthly, the review of labor laws as promised by this government to the ILO. Tambuya says this is an equal partnership as they aim to succeed in the 2018 election. What's going to determine the next elections is really the youth vote. There's a, there's a bulk of the youth vote there that uh, they need to be captured. Uh, certainly we bring in uh, the, uh, we, can appeal, uh, we can appeal to women. Uh, we can certainly appeal to uh, a lot of uh, Workers. the workers yeah, as our basis. And really when tackling the bread and butter issues, is, that's our biggest appeal. Sudalpa leader Siti Veni Rambuka says PDP's inclusion means more supporters for the party. One of the three things that we wanted to do, during, uh, we want to do and we continue to try and do uh, in Sudalpa is to retain the vote we had, recapture those that we have lost since the Alliance days, and also to recruit the young ones who have just uh, qualified to vote. Sudalpa has also announced their first 30 provisional candidates for the election, which includes nine current opposition MPs seeking re-election, former MPs, entrepreneurs, as well as youth representatives. Akosita Tali, FBC News. Meanwhile, former Sudalpa member Mick Beddows has made shocking revelations, exposing certain members who collectively plot to stage an internal coup to out its former leader and paramount chief Rote Mumu Kepa to re to be replaced by current leader Sitiveni Rambuka. Beros claims the group had collectively fabricated the investigations and findings of position of his cleanup campaign report that was later dubbed the Ngauna Vinaka report. An email that was allegedly intercepted by Mick Beddows has revealed certain politicians tried to overthrow Rote Mumukepa, Ratu Iso Tikoda, the late Andilo Fitumalani, their parliamentary staff and Beddows himself. The statement was posted by the former Sodalpa member on social media, which has been shared and circulated publicly. Beddows claims an email was sent from Moses Mbulitavu to Andi Litia Ngioni Mbaravi, Sainia Naranronro and Ratu Nayangama Lalambalavu on August 15, 2015. Beddows claims these individuals along with others collectively fabricated the Ngonavinaka report and orchestrated an entire investigation to deceive the unsuspecting members into believing they were trying to establish the truth. Beddows alleges his suspicions was proved accurate when the email sent by Bulitabu surfaced on August 15, three days after the Ngonavinaka report was leaked. The statement also shows copies of Bulitabu's emails and the recipients. Beddows claims that party leader Sitiveni Rambuka's appointment was part of the group's strategy, adding there will be a restructure and renaming of Sodalpa and the re-emergence of conservative alliance Matenin Tuvanua or the Kemvi. Beddows also alleges that Mbulitavu's email has revealed people that were involved in the Ngonavinaka saga, including Ratu Kilpate Vakalalambure, Semesa Karavaki, Kinivile Ame Kiliraki, Aseri Ranrondo, Mikaleawere, CBM supporters and former Canvi supporters within Sodelpa. 
When contacted by FBC News, Bado says he didn't have anything further to add to his statement. Rabuka says he isn't aware of this revelation, however didn't want to comment on the issue, adding that he wasn't part of the party in 2015. Andi Litiangyon Baravi and Senya Narandondro also declined to comment. Questions have been sent and calls made to other alleged party members, however proved unsuccessful when this bulletin went to air. Akusita Tale, FBC News. The Fiji First Party has advertised for potential candidates who wish to contest the 2018 general election under their party. The party is inviting Fijians who wish to join them to send in their applications. The Fiji First Party will also boost their advertisements over the next few days to enable them to get the best candidates. Current members of Fiji First will also need to apply for next year's elections. Essentially asking people who are interested in uh, standing as a candidate for Fiji First uh, to apply. Uh, they have approximately four to five weeks to apply. Uh, the applications close in early January and uh, we ask people to firstly of course to comply with the law uh, that is set out in the constitution. 156 reported cases of cybercrime have been investigated or are currently under investigation by the Police Cybercrime Unit since 2008. This was highlighted by the Police Commissioner at the Attorney General's Conference in Natandola yesterday. Brigadier General Sitiveni Gilaho is now calling on our cyberspace to be regulated. Filipina Castle reports. It was a clear-cut answer from the Commissioner of Police regarding the World Wide Web. The reality is that a few years' time, the policing landscape will shift dramatically from routine policing out on the front line to more policing of cyberspace. So to answer the question posed to us on whether we should regulate cyberspace, the answer is a definite yes. The Police Cybercrime Unit is now dealing largely with the cybercrimes under the Crimes Act of 2009. Gilio stated the provision makes specific mention of computers only, but is silent on other digital devices such as mobile phones that have the capacity to store data and connect to the web. For example, if a suspect refuses to provide the password to his or her computer or mobile phone, we cannot lay charges against him or her for refusing to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, the Crimes Act, however, does not begin to capture the complexities and the diverse range of cybersecurity breaches that occur in Fiji, which affect the cyber environment and infrastructure. Similar sentiments were shared by the Director of Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission. Additional materials that have the potential of diminishing one's privacy and sense of dignity, such as revenge porn, cyberbullying, the circulation of images containing physical and sexual abuse of children, the circulation of images of people who died in tragic circumstances while families are still grieving, cannot possibly justify it as freedom of expression. Relevant stakeholders are continuously working together to ensure these issues are dealt with accordingly when it is highlighted. Philip and I, Castle, FBC News. The 19th Attorney General's conference engaged in not only legal issues, but also socio-economic issues. Issues of inclusivity, disabilities, access to basic needs and human rights were also discussed during the conference. Attorney General Ayaz Said Kayum says the quality of discussions in the last five years have improved significantly. It's become a, a premier conference as far as discussing not only legal issues directly, but also socioeconomic issues that actually affect the making of laws and indeed the formulation of laws. And also to be able to question laws that do currently exist and perhaps laws that we do need to introduce into Fiji. Still to come, Malta Village to receive government assistance. And tonight we bring you the story of a successful fish vendor. Stay with us. Bula FM number dua and seri.
For the first time ever, villages of Mauta village in the district of Nandongo were visited by a government team, bringing them awareness on various government initiatives and assistance that is available to them. Eleanor Turangarivu accompanied the government team and files this report. This week, a team of government officials led by the Madhwata Provincial Council and the Divisional Police Commander Northern visited Mota village to familiarize the villagers with the various government laws, policies and initiatives, as well as the types of assistance available to them. I went to school and then I dropped out from school and since then I have been in the village. And this is the first time for this outreach to come to us ever since I was brought up. The village lies on the northern coast of Madhwata. Development in this small, quiet village has come at a snail's pace. I'm really thankful to this program that has been brought to us because for a long time we have been waiting for government assistance to reach our village. The villagers raised their concerns on land issues, the road conditions, as well as the lack of a proper and safe water supply. The government team has answered our needs, especially for individuals and for families with the information we have received today. We now know that we will receive assistance because we have been told the assistance will be provided to us here in the village. There are only 11 homes in the village of Mota with a population of less than 100. Eleanor Turangaybiu, FBC News. Medical Services Pacific, or MSP as it's generally known, has now expanded their services to the Northern Division. This week, MSP launched their power project as well as their one-stop shop clinic in Lambasa with the support of the UN Women and the Canada Fund. Eleanor Turangaybiu reports once again. The one-stop shop clinic will provide various medical care and health services for the general public, adolescents, women and children, as well as provide counselling and legal aid support for survivors of domestic violence, sexual violence, abuse and neglect. I'm sure you're following the news and hearing all about the high numbers of rape cases proceeding through the court system now. This is in fact due to a large part to our integrated program and our partnership with the Fiji Police. Since setting up in Suva in 2010, MSP has reached over 90,000 clients directly, delivered over 200,000 services, provided over 100,000 family planning services, performed over 3,000 cervical cancer screenings, held over 3,000 counselling sessions, treated over 500 sexual assault clients, and visited 295 communities and 97 schools. The High Commission has worked with MSP for the past two years uh, through our development program, which is called the Canada Fund for Local Initiatives. This fund supports NGOs to implement initiatives that address grassroots needs at the community level. Project Power, which is a protecting our women engaging rights, is funded by the UN Women through the Women's Peace and Humanitarian Fund, and it is about providing resources for post-rape care and sexual reproductive health services, as well as being able to rapidly respond to disaster or sexual and gender-based violence. Since August, MSP, along with police, have been conducting home visits in Vonolevu, providing essential services to survivors of sexual violence. They also met with village heads to raise awareness on protection issues. Eleanor Turangaybiu, FBC News. A large number of small and medium enterprises will feature their products at the 2018 Fijian Fashion Festival. During the launch last night, festival trustee Faraz Ali says... The festival will focus on trade and the development of the SME sector. Ali says the festival will prominently feature a commercial element and provide a platform for upcoming entrepreneurs. He adds the criteria for the designers to participate in the festival is strongly geared towards building entrepreneurship skills. A much stricter selection criteria for designers. Um, we will require the designers have um, uh, online commercial retailing after the show, which the, which the Fashion Council will provide. Um, and basically, yeah, we, well, um, the entire thing is geared towards sales. So we're not, we're not looking for one-time shows. What we're looking for now is a change. We're looking for a shift. What we're looking for now is people who are going to create, to create businesses. 
The National Fire Authority is currently underway with the assessment of the fire that destroyed the J. Santaram bulk store and the Lotus Garment Factory along Robertson Road in Suva yesterday. NFA Chief Fire Officer Gyonilao Modetai says NFA together with the Fiji Police Force have managed to clear the fire remains yesterday to get full access of the building. The cause of the fire and the total cost of the damages is still uncertain as the investigation continues. We uh, from National Fire Authority and uh, the Fiji Police are trying to carry out to find out the cause of fire in doing the investigation at uh, Jason Trump's uh, workshop. Eh? They have, they've just started this morning and uh, hopefully in the next two days we'll be able to complete it. Miss American Samoa Gwendolyn To'o Malatai was crowned the 2017 Miss Pacific Islands at Nandi's Prince Charles Park last night. To'o Malatai also won Miss Photogenic, Miss Tourism and the Best Traditional Attire. The 23-year-old was emotional as she dedicated the win to someone very close to her. Meanwhile, Miss Samoa Alexandra Lakopo was crowned the first runner-up. Fiji's Haile Nganga was second runner-up, followed by Miss Cook Islands as the third runner-up. Tonga will host next year's Miss Pacific Islands pageant. Express my sincere gratitude to the Lord, to my families and friends, to my team, and especially to my country, and to my dad. I wish you were here. Remember the two benefits of failure. If you fail, you learn what doesn't work, and it also gives you the opportunity to try a new approach. Well, in tonight's successful Fijian features, 35-year-old Vilisi Tambua, a fish vendor at the Suva Fish Market. Tambua shares her humble beginnings from a fish seller until becoming a major fish supplier to well-known restaurants in the capital. Senia Nimboila with the details. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank. Your partner in progress. Vilisi's journey began when she got married at 18. Young but hopeful for a new beginning to a successful future. I was working as a, as a sales assistant and become a supervisor. Then when I joined uh, Courts Fiji Limited, I was a manager in that branch where I was working. And when I was working there, the trust, the what the workload they always do so i was thinking that from that i can start my own business elisi began her fish vendor business with only 500 dollars in 2010. when i started it was i was only buying the fish from the village it was only 200 dollars to 500 dollars financial support and family time was a major challenge as she worked harder to meet the demands from fishermen, the fisheries ministry, and her own family. Life goes on. We, it's a time when we understand each other. So when they come back from school, I tell them so what to cook, and I come back and then cook dinner. Sometimes it's quite really hard. Before they go to school, I have to left early if the fish, uh, if the boat uh, arrives early. So sometimes they're still there, maybe sometimes they're still asleep. I have to go and uh, see the divers. However, her business received a boost of $20,000 from the South Pacific Business Development as the business continued to grow. Jump to 4000 then jump to 5000 Um oh, Last year I took my first uh, SMA loan which was 8,000. And this year I was able to become the, the big 10,000 on uh, Friday last week. As the business flourished, Vilisi managed to upgrade their home from a lean to house to a two bedroom house at Langi Langi Housing in Rewanga. My advice to all women out there nothing is uh, hard from God, everything is possible through your hard working, through your when you're willing to do it, you can do it. Vilisi is now a major fish supplier, the new Peking restaurant, Eden restaurant, and other restaurants operating at the Atulau Arcade in Suva. Sainia Nimboila, FPC News. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress.
And Sports Fiji to face South Africa in the Cup quarterfinal. And Fiji football hopes for gold in doubt. This and more coming up. I'm Anare Sorbokro of Nayabu Wenimbuka Telebu. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hiding Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We're here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka. Love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fiji Airways National Sevens team opened their Cape Town Sevens tournament campaign with two wins and a loss during their pool games. Fiji won their first pool match against Wales 28 points to 14 with Eroni Sao, Kalioni Nasoko, Chasavere Malua and Amenoni Nasilasila crossing over the try line to give Fiji a promising start to the competition. Unfortunately, in the second pool game, the tables turned for the Fijian boys as they were beaten by the Canadians 22 points to 14 before they could regain momentum and teamwork to thrash the Samoans in their last pool play, 38 points to 7. Fiji will take on host team South Africa in the first quarterfinal tonight. The quarterfinals will start at 11.04 p.m., semi-finals at 3.34 a.m. tomorrow, while the final will be held at 6.44 a.m. The Fiji Barbarians' hope of winning gold at the Pacific Minigames Rugby Sevens competition fell short after they lost to Samoa 14 points to 7. Both teams have been undefeated throughout the tournament, but the Samoans proved strong despite a close physical encounter. Fiji had opportunities to score tries but were unsuccessful and they gave away a lot of penalties which enabled Samoa to test the Barbarians' defence. Samoa wins gold, Fiji winning silver and Tonga scooping the bronze medal after beating Solomon Islands 24 points to 19. Meanwhile, Tonga have also qualified for the Oceania spot in the 2018 Rugby Sevens World Cup. Also in the Pacific Mini Games, Fiji's Spare Table Tennis Men's Wheelchair category, Iokomba Tambera Nimbo successfully defended his title yesterday, winning gold and ranked as number one in the Oceania region. Mary Roden also scooped a gold medal in the women's category, while Akanisi Latu settled for silver. Meanwhile, in beach volleyball, Fiji won gold on both categories for men and women and have qualified to the Commonwealth Games next year. The Vodafone Fiji football team have two more games left to play to determine their medal playoffs in the Pacific Mini Games in Vanuatu. In the latest update for all teams, Vanuatu and Solomon Islands are currently leading the points table with two wins each and a draw. Fiji is in third place with one win and two draws. New Caledonia and Tuvalu follow with one win and two losses and Tonga with three straight losses. All six teams have played three games so far and two more to be played next week to determine the winners. Lotoka suffered their second defeat in a friendly match against Wellington at three points to nil this afternoon in Lotoka's Churchill Park. Compared to their first friendly on Friday with a 6-0 defeat, the Sugar City boys have shown a little improvement, narrowing the score margin despite the loss. Lotoka will now focus on the OFC Championship League next year when they take on Auckland City in their first match. It was a good game, actually. Uh, we expected this from uh, Tio Wellington because they are the champion side. And uh, and we are preparing for our league, you know. We expected this, and uh, the boys they they really played uh, good football. Uh, I think we lost concentration and patience, uh, but uh, it, it it was a very good builder for our league because we, uh, if we look at the team Wellington, and they are the same caliber as uh, Auckland City, so we are basically getting the idea what kind of football we expect from Auckland City. The Junior Fiji Tribe won the 2017 AFL Under-15 Youth Oceania Cup on Friday, beating Nauru Stars 30 points to 15 at Suva's Albert Park. Competing in the final for the fourth consecutive year, Fiji now has a bigger picture in mind to develop its players. Eroni Tuinuku reports. 
AFL has been a developing spot in the country after its introduction four years ago. The four that they're a development team, but they're really, really impressive. And then obviously the continued improvement of our national, our national side, our Fiji Tribe boys, they're looking really, really strong this year. Fiji is focused on taking the next step to improve the standard of local players for international exposure. If they're good enough in the Queensland squad, they can go on and get selected to play in an Australian squad. And just this year, we've had one Papua New Guinean boy go through that pathway. So we're looking to try and find some Fijians that will be good enough to then sort of follow that talent pathway into playing full-time footy in Australia. Meanwhile, Fiji under-15 captain Sitiven Mbaibo says he has learned a lot from the Oceania Cup tournament. I learned my skills from the, especially from the Nauruan side. Fiji will start preparing its senior players from next year as they focus on the Senior World Cup in 2020. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. Well, fine weather was experienced over most parts of the country today. A trough of low pressure remains slow moving over the Solomon Islands, extending to Tuvalu to the north of Samoa and over the southern Cooks. Well, it was a sunny day throughout the Western Division today. Ba, Lotoka and Nandi were the hottest at 32 degrees. Eastwards, from Pacific Harbour to Suva, it was a different situation on the other side of the island as it was mostly cloudy. It was mostly a humid day with no rain. Pacific Harbour was the coolest at 28 degrees. Up north, it was sunny across Vanuolebu with Lambasa recording the highest temperature at 32 degrees. At sea, southeast winds 10 to 15 knots, moderate to rough seas. The next high tide will be at 1.58 tomorrow morning with low tide at 8.32 p.m. Sunrise is at 6.28. Now for tomorrow, there will be brief showers over the southern and eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. As for the further outlook, there will be isolated afternoon or evening showers and thunderstorms elsewhere. Recapping the main stories, Sadelpa hopes to gain more followers. Fiji First seeks, a, seeks for potential candidates and calls made to regulate cyberspace. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question. Should the Fiji Sevens coach bring in overseas players for the World Cup next year? Visit our FBC website to answer. Do send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FBC News or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night.